Hello everyone, Helen here. Thanks for coming to join me today. It's ages since I've been here for a proper little bit of a chat, chit chat. And uh, yeah, the last couple of podcasts have been my recent camper van trip. And then I was at Wonderwall before that in the previous podcast. So yeah, I haven't really had a proper catch up with you for ages. And yeah, sorry, it's a slightly funny light today, but it's one of those days where it's really bright outside and it seems to make the camera look a bit kind of hazy. As long as you can hear me all right, that's the main thing. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, and, and thank you, by the way, for everybody who's left such lovely and appreciative comments for the last couple of camper van videos. I'm so glad that you enjoy them. You know, I have no idea whether I'm kind of doing the right thing and it's re really uh it's really good to know that the format that I use is uh one that uh, uh, is of interest to lots of you so yeah thank you very much indeed uh but yes a bit more of a oh well it's a real potpourri of a podcast today I've got a, a few different things so I've got some finished knitting projects and I've got a bit of watercolour painting a uh, bit of baking and then a bit of being outside in nature. So all sorts today. I better get on with it, haven't I? So, yeah. So first of all, let's, uh, I will come to Wonky Frogs, which is in the title of this episode shortly. But I'm going to start off with ducklings today. And I have shared with you in a previous podcast that I had been knitting ducklings from a kit that I bought from Lucy Locketland and it included a pattern by Claire Garland who is Dot Pebbles otherwise known as the designer Dot Pebbles and uh, I really love those ducklings and um, yeah, so I made six of them using the kit but I found that well I couldn't really stop I was really addicted to making them <laughs> because I just love them so much they are so They've got so much character when you finish them. They've got such a lot of character and they're a beautiful shape and I love the fluffiness of them. Oh, yes, I just couldn't stop making. They're also a lovely small project to, to have. You kind of you can finish it fairly quickly. I would probably do it, probably do it over two evenings if I was just knitting in the evening. Um, and yes, so I just kept making them. And eventually ran out of yarn from the kit, but uh, I have be, just been using other scraps of yarn to, to make some more. And what I've really enjoyed is um, combining colours because you knit the ducks with uh, some Shetland wool and some mohair, some fine mohair held together. So you get that really fluffy, fluffy duckling look. And so I've uh, I've been trying different colours of uh, Shetland yarn and mohair together and I've, I've really enjoyed just seeing what the different combinations look like. Hopefully you're seeing a few here. And uh, yeah, so I've ended up making six more ducklings and had a very nice time taking them out in the garden for a bit of a photo shoot uh, along with the other ducklings that I made, apart from two of them which uh, have already gone to a new home. And yeah, I think most of these ducklings that I've made will be going off as gifts to, to various people. But uh, yes, so yeah, they had a lovely time out in the garden anyway. And uh, I, I even had a, a photo bomber at one point uh, coming in to have a good sniff at the ducks. Uh, he is called Troy and he lives next door to me. And very often, if I'm in the garden, he comes to say hello. He likes to come and visit us in the garden. Uh, so, yes, so he, he came and joined in. And so, yes, yeah, so there we go. Lots and lots of ducklings. So I could say that was a finished project, but I can't promise not to be knitting anymore. But I'm trying to just stop for the moment uh, and knit other things. So that's it for ducklings. So the next finished project that I'm going to share with you is uh, the, the first thing that I've knitted from a new book that I've shared with you before by Cynthia Valle called Motion Friends and if you're new here well I will say I am a big fan of Cynthia Valle's 
uh, patterns, knitting patterns. She makes the most beautiful animals. So not only are they lovely characters, but I love the way the patterns are written because they're written so uh, in such a clear way. Every little thing is explained. And I also love the fact that um, there's no sewing together of bits and bobs. You don't have to sew on legs and arms and ears at the end. It's all done in one. So here we go. So here is my finished bear. So in the book, the bear is called Moosh and is a boy. But in fact, as, as soon as I started knitting this bear, I knew that she was a girl. And after a while, she told me that her name was Joanna. So this is Joanna. And... <laughs> Uh, you can see she's oh, she's just gorgeous. Look at that profile, really beautiful. So I've knitted two of Cynthia Valle's other bear patterns before. And the first one is the Tutu bear, which is about half the height of this one. And that Tutu bear is in a seated position. And then I've also knitted the one called Myrtle bear, which is this kind of height, but more kind of banana shaped. So neither sitting or standing. And so one of the differences with this pattern is that it is really a standing bear. And uh, and her head is not looking up so much as the, the myrtle bear that I made. Uh, yeah, so, so there we go. So, th so this is Joanna and knitting her was reasonably problem free. Um, and there was one point where I, I had her in the camper van and when I when I took the uh, knitting out of my bag, half of the stitches fell off the needles, which wasn't good, especially as the light wasn't great and it's dark brown yarn. Anyway, anyway, we, I survived that little little accident. Uh, and yeah, so I don't really um, have a problem knit, knitting her until I made, was making a start on the sec the first leg, should I say? Uh, and I realised that I was running out of yarn. Wasn't sure if I had enough to finish her. Um, so anyway, I, I, I just kept knitting and knitting for a, for a while and uh, then kind of had a little look through my stash, found that I had no more of this. This is, uh, by the way, Drops Alpaca 4-ply and I have loads of colours in it because it's one that I like using to make toys with, uh, but no brown of this shade. So I just kept on knitting and finished the first leg and I thought, well, I'll just see, I'll just see how how far I can get. But it was very clear as soon as I started on the second leg, I wasn't going to have quite enough. And in fact, I, I posted one or two photos on Instagram uh, of, of the half finished second leg and the tiny amount of yarn I had left. And I loved somebody's suggestion, which was to finish knitting the leg in white so it looked like her leg was in plaster <laughs> so that was really funny and in fact if I decided not to have a game of yarn chicken I could have finished part way down the first leg and knit a completely different colour and then done the same on the other leg so it looked like she was wearing socks but no I decided to risk it and uh, anyway so then I had to then well first of all I tried to buy another ball of this colour yarn only to find that it's been discontinued and there isn't anything else nearly as dark as this one. Um, I, I couldn't find it anywhere at all, not even on eBay. Uh, so, so then I looked through my stash again and I found a very tiny ball of, of a dark brown that I'd used. Well, it came as part of a kit for knitting a gnome actually and decided that was going to be the best that I was going to find. And so you will see from this photo here that she has got a slightly different coloured end of her foot. In fact, the base of her foot as well is, is in that other yarn. But it looks fine. I'm completely happy with it. I don't mind that at all. So anyway. <laughs> and then, of course, it was time to knit her some clothes. And I really love the uh, pyjamas that are in the book. But the pyjamas have got about 150 buttons down the front and uh, I just didn't really feel like I was going to be in the mood for sewing on so many buttons. Well, not 150, but quite a lot. 
of buttons. Uh, so I decided to make the dungarees. And I do love the dungarees anyway. So I made them. I did have a problem with them as well because very stupidly I forgot to uh, I forgot to check the needle size before I started making them, making the dungarees. And I just carried on using the same size as I'd used for the bear, and which was two millimetre, so very fine. And the clothes didn't need such. I think the clothes needed 3.25 or something like that. So quite a difference. So you can see in the photo here, <laughs> first attempt at the dungarees uh, was, was way too small. And so I had to start all over again. And I'm not a very fast knitter, really. I'm not. It took me ages. It took me such a long time to finish these dungarees. And also I was a bit obsessed with knitting ducklings as well. So anyway, she, she looks absolutely gorgeous in her dungarees anyway. These fit perfectly and took me a while to uh, choose the buttons because when I first started looking through my button collection uh, I I found one tiny little perfectly sized bear, brown bear and I thought oh that would be perfect for these dungarees. Well I searched and searched and searched I couldn't find a matching one uh, so I had to abandon that idea. Anyway I do like the little pink hearts uh, put on on there they look very nice and uh, Joanna's favorite design feature is the little hole at the back for her tail so yes so the, if there's no lump at the back she can be very comfortable having her tail out there and yeah so she enjoyed her little photo shoot out in the garden as well and uh, yeah I think she's looking very very smart indeed so there we go, that is Joanna. So I think now on to frogs. And if you were watching me a few, quite a few podcasts ago, you might have seen me uh, attempting a couple of different frog patterns. One was a crochet one and one was a knitted one. And I had problems with both of them, ended up with rather wonky frogs then, in fact. Um, so, uh, so I decided to have a go at this uh, uh, a different one and if you um, are on Instagram and you uh, you know you follow lots of kind of creative people on there uh, you will no doubt have seen a frog that was designed by Claire Garland dot pebbles which hundreds and thousands of people have made and they're all beautiful I haven't seen any wonky ones anyway so I thought right I'm going to have a go at this I finally gave in and decided I was going to have a go at this frog a tiny little frog so you can see sit, sits in my hand you can see I have have got the frog here uh, I, I did succeed uh, and uh, but yeah I, I did have some problems with it though um and uh, well one of the one of the problems anyway, it wasn't actually a problem knitting the frog um i had a little bit of trouble with the sewing up i ended up with with it being lopsided to begin with even though you do put in stitch markers to line things up i, I don't know i don't know what happened really um the problem came when i put the eyes in and because I'd had great success with the ducklings, gluing the eyes in of those ducklings, I thought, right, I'll do that with a frog. And uh, so I put them in and I'm usually really careful about checking that they're level and, you know, in just the right position. And I hadn't. And it was too late. I realised the glue was set. <laughs> that the, uh, one of the eyes was much lower than the other one. And it just looked really stupid. Uh, so I, I did find that gluing eyes in is very, very good uh, and it's very hard to get them out. I did manage to get one of the eyes out though and reline them, although they're not quite to my satisfaction, but I wasn't going to do that again. I had a big problem with picking up stitches for the kind of top of the mouth. So where the tummy joins with the, with the end of the head. Um, you had to pick up stitches in a in a curve there because you know around the top of the mouth um, and 
I, well, I ended up snapping a needle. It didn't say anything in the pattern about using more than one needle. It was a sensible thing to do, I discovered, when I had to redo it all. Um, but, yeah, so I think that, that could have been better explained for people like me, you know. If you're extremely talented at, at uh, knitting these things, then maybe it was obvious. It wasn't obvious to me what you did. So I actually used three double pointed needles to do one side of the mouth, then the top of the mouth and then the other side. And then I didn't have any problem after that. Well, it's a bit fiddly, but um, the other thing that I thought was a bit odd about the pattern is that the arms and the legs are knitted um, using mostly using I cord. And I have only ever knit I-cord using double pointed needles, uh, but this pattern was written for just using normal single pointed needles. And oh gosh, the, the explanation is really long winded. And so because I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar with doing I-cord on double pointed needles, I just, I used double pointed needles and I didn't follow the pattern other than doing the right number of rows. But, um, yeah, so that, uh, apart from that, <laughs> apart from that, it was okay. And I uh, also knitted the little sweater for the frog, which I probably could have used a smaller size needle because it is quite kind of, um, well, it's longer than I was expecting it to be. But I think it looks really nice. So I'm really happy about that. And one thing that lots of people do with this frog is to put wires in the legs and arms so that you can kind of pose it in different poses and so it will it can actually stand freely as well. But I'm I'm not too troubled about doing that. It's most likely just to, you know, maybe sit in my pocket or in my bag or something if he's going out somewhere with me. <laughs> so, so I decided not to put wires in. Uh, but I, I am really pleased with him now that he's finished. He's not really too wonky anymore. But while I was busy making him, a new tutorial for watercolour painting popped up on YouTube, uh, a channel I've mentioned lots of times before, uh, the De Winton Paper Co. And a lovely lady, Harriet, who does the most excellent tutorials uh, for for beginners and more experienced uh, painters, I am very much a beginner, uh, and it it just seemed quite fortuitous how, how that she, this this tutorial was to paint a frog, and it was kind of a sign that I, I should get back and practice a bit because I hadn't done any painting since before Christmas, and uh, so I decided to have a go at this frog, and. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to share you my process of trying to paint a frog. I have three attempts at it. Uh, they're not terrible, but I'm not really happy with them. So I'm not sharing them with you uh, because I think they're good. Uh, I'm just sharing them with you to show you that I'm having a go. And um, yeah, you can see how I got on. So yeah, let's let's see my attempt at painting the frog.
So I do think my attempts at painting the frogs were maybe a little bit wonky, not quite right, something quite not, not quite right about them, but um, I have to set those critical uh, thoughts aside when I do things like that, things that I'm really not at all confident with and just praise myself because A, I've had a go at it and B, I did have a nice time doing it. So, you know, uh, there's, yeah, you have, to, you have to try and think about the positive things and not, not be unkind to yourself if you're not really happy with how things have turned out. And talking of wonky frogs, I was lucky enough recently to be able to buy another of Paula's lovely creations, Paula from Stitched by Mrs D. She has a thing that she does now and then called Teddy Bear Club, which are beautiful little toys that she makes, sometimes teddies, but, some, but all sorts of other animals. And when I saw that she was uh, making frogs, I thought, oh, I'd love to have one of those. So when I'm saying wonky frog, Paula's toys are not wonky at all in that in the lopsided sense. They are absolutely beautifully made. And uh, I, th I think I'm thinking more in the sense of quirky because they are completely unique in style they really you can tell um that you know who's made them uh, i absolutely love them and this little frog apparently is called diana came with a little card saying my name's diana and my favorite food are pink sugar mice so there we go i'll make sure that she has some pink sugar mice sometime uh, so yeah so really really lovely anyway enough of frogs <laughs> um and I think we'll pop into the kitchen now. Let's let's go and make something. Uh, this is not something that has any interesting historical background or anything. I just thought the other day, I haven't had any of that for ages, some date and oat slice. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe my lovely viewers might like to be reminded or introduced to date and oat slice and you might fancy having a go. So come into the kitchen with me now. So finally, I think, uh, oh, I told you it was going to be a potpourri today. Uh, we're going to go outside and whenever I'm out for my little walks each day, I, I can never resist taking a few photos or bits of video of the things that have caught my attention on that particular day. 
and I realised I was amassing quite a collection of photos I'd taken since spring started to, you know, bring everything into bloom and uh, and then gradually we're approaching summer. So I've put together a few of those photos and um, and videos just just so that we can appreciate the uh, uh, approach of summer, going through spring into summer and uh, just enjoy a bit of nature's uh, just magic. So let's go outside. Well, I think it really is time for me to go. This is uh, definitely a bit longer than I usually do, but hopefully you don't mind <laughs> listening to me rattle on about everything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so I, I will go now and I shall wish you a lovely week ahead. Not, not too busy, but lots of nice things in it. And take good care of yourself. I will be back again very soon. Okay then, bye.